Beginner's Guide to Colour Genetics in Budgery Cars. In this video we're going to look at the uh, sex-linked chromosomes and the genes contained within those uh, chromosomes and how they interact and the varieties of um, bird that they produce. But before we do that what I'd like to do is take you back to the very first video when I discussed how why I got into being interested in the um, genetics of colour budgerigars. And if you remember that, it was because I produced a, um, a white lace wing from a sky blue cock and a light green gene. And I was trying to work out why, um, how I managed to get this variety from those two birds. Um, by now, those of you that have watched the um, previous videos will know that the uh, white in the uh, lace wing is purely the um, blue series bird without the, the blue. So we know that the um, the hen bird, the sky, uh, sorry, the light green hen, must have been split for um, blue. So, just to recap then, so the light green hen was um, a phenotype uh, light green, but its genotype was green split blue. So that accounts for the um, fact that the offspring was uh, a blue series bird, or a white bird, which, we, which as we know is a blue series bird, but what about the, um, the lacewing gene then? Well, I suppose those of you that have watched the previous videos, there might be a natural assumption that the, um, both birds were split for lacewing. So, so lacewing being a recessive uh, mutation, um, but the both birds might have been split for lacewing. However, I, knowing what I know now, I could have predicted that the, um, when the, the young was still uh, fresh in the nest, the moment it, I could see that it had um, pinkish or, or those plum coloured eyes and the um, down was, was very white rather than the, the usual sort of grey or light grey colour, that the bird was going to be um, a hen. And I would have known that because I know that the um, lace wing or the um, ino and the cinnamon uh, mutation is linked to the sex chromosome. So what do we mean by the sex chromosome? Right, so what do we mean by um, the uh, sex uh, chromosome? Well, as you, I'm sure you all remember um, from the first video where we looked at the fact that um, in each cell there are a number of pairs of chromosomes and each of those pairs of chromosomes are exactly the same in that the pair of chromosomes that may contain the um, uh, blue mutated or the green uh, gene um, is exactly the same place in the, each of the pairs of chromosome. So the mutated genes in the same place as the non-mutated gene. So the pairs of chromosomes are in effect um, are virtually identical. The difference there is around the um, sex chromosome. So that's the chromosome that contains or dictates which sex the bird is going to be. Now, in humans or in mammals, uh, that pair of chromosomes, so the pair of chromosomes in a, in a male um, mammal contains a one um, X chromosome and one Y chromosome and that produces the um, uh, male in a mammal and in a female uh, mammal, so a woman, will contain two Y chromosomes. So we can see that in mammals the X chromosome is, affected, is dominant and the Y chromosome is uh, recessive. So um, if, the, if the mammal contains the X chromosome then it will be um, uh, a male. If it doesn't contain the X chromosome and contains two Y chromosomes, then it will be a female. Um, in birds, birds follow a slightly different um, uh, uh, setup than, than mammals, and um, they're very similar to um, uh, the reptilian thyme in, in that they contain, so the male will contain two um, X chromosomes, and the female will contain one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. So in this case, we know that the Y chromosome is dominant over the X chromosome because. Um, in actual fact, the, um, if a bird contains the Y chromosome, then it will be a female. If the bird doesn't contain the Y chromosome and two X chromosomes, then it will in effect be a male. So um, I had a, a message through from somebody asking about um, which of the two birds controls the sex of the um, offspring. Well, in those terms, so in terms of the dominant chromosome, it would be the, the hen, um, because she's the only one that can pass on the um, y chromosome, so if she, and if she passes that on, there's a 50-50 chance of her passing it on, um, then the bird will be a hen. But of course it, it does take two um, birds to produce any bird, so, um, but the hen 
the Y chromosome will um, dictate the um, sex of the offspring. Now there's then something else interesting about the um, two uh, chromosomes, the difference between the X and the Y chromosome, and that is that the Y chromosome is completely different to the X chromosome. And in fact it is much smaller and contains very uh, far fewer genes, and we believe it contains far fewer genes than the um, X chromosome. And this makes um, an interesting um, situation when you get the, an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So those genes that are contained on the X chromosome but are not contained on the Y chromosome um, and how those interact or how they um, produce the new bird. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go across and have a look at what that means. So we'll have a graphical look at what that means in terms of the, um, the two chromosomes and then we'll look at some Punnett squares and um, see what happens when we um, mate two birds across that have genes that are situated on the, um, the X chromosome and the bird with the Y chromosome doesn't, doesn't, therefore doesn't contain them, How what that means in terms of the outcome and the variety of bird that we can produce. So, um, I'll see you back across at the computer. Well, hello again. Here we are back at the computer and um, I'm sure you recognise uh, this or at least part of this graphic, the bit of the graphic on the left hand side showing the um, two um, identical chromosomes, which is what we looked at before. And if you remember rightly, each of the bars um, in this graphic just represented um, one of the locus for a particular gene type. And if you remember, there's two chromosomes, one from each bird, um, and therefore there are two alleles for each of the genes in each of the locuses. Um, we said um, a bit earlier that the um, X and Y chromosomes were slightly different, and I've tried to represent this here. Now, clearly, this is just a representation of what they look like. Um, and we can see that the X chromosome is um, similar to most of the other chromosomes. It's fairly full, has a, a large number of, or a reasonable number of um, genes on it. But the Y chromosome is much smaller and contains much less information. So what does that mean in terms of um, the bird? for example. So let's, I've marked the top bar, or the second from top bar on the um, X chromosome with the word sin, representing that that is the um, location of the um, gene that, when mutated, produces the cinnamon allylase. And the cinnamon is recessive. In fact, all of the um, gene types on the that we know of so far on the X chromosome are recessive. Um, so the um, non-cinnamon or the non-mutated cinnamon um, allylase is uh, going to be dominant. So the normal, the wild type um, uh, gene is dominant over the mutated cinnamon gene. So, but however, you will notice that um, if we look at the two chromosomes, that whilst we have a a um, allylase for the X chromosome, there's no equivalent allylase um, for the Y chromosome. So what I'll do now is we'll bring up the um, uh, Punnett square and just have a look at what that might mean in terms of any outcomes from any pairings. Well here's the first of the Punnett squares that we'll look at um, in terms of the, um, uh, the cinnamon birds that we were speaking about. So um, so let's assume we've got a, a cock bird that's normal split cinnamon. Now we represent that along the top as per usual here. So that's the um, wild type um, gene which is dominant and there's the cinnamon gene which is recessive so we've got a normal split um, cinnamon cock. Notice this time however that we've actually put an X in front of the um, the mutation mutated genes description. This is to demonstrate that um, or to represent the fact that it's on the X chromosome which is important when we then look at the um, hen. So the hen as a is a normal hen so it has a X chromosome with the non-mutated cinnamon gene on it and it has a Y chromosome with no um, equivalent allylase um, or no equivalent locus on the um, chromosome. So let's have a look at what happens when we cross the two birds. So here we are then, that's the um, outcome placed in the um, Punnett square. So we can see here that we're going to have um, top uh, left hand square produces um, as it contains two of the X chromosomes, it's going to be 
a cock bird, so we're going to have 25% of the birds will be um, normal cock birds over here. Again, this is going to be a cock bird, so we're going to have 25% of the birds um, normal um, split cinnamon cock birds down here. Um, because this now contains the Y chromosome, this is going to be a hen bird, so 25% of the birds are going to be um, normal um, hens and over, over here 25% of the birds are going to be cinnamon hens and that might be roughly what we'd expect the outcome to be um, just using the normal um, recessive and dominant um, gene types as we've seen before. What we'll do now though is we'll look at a different pairing and see what the outcome So here we are with a new um, Punnett square, um, this time with a, a slightly different pairing. So here we have a cinnamon cockbird represented from the fact that we have a um, two alleleses with the on the X chromosome with the mutated cinnamon gene, and a normal hen represented by the fact that we've got um, the X chromosome containing the non uh, mutated gene and a Y chromosome, once again not carrying um, any of the equivalent um, uh, alleles or locus in terms of the on the chromosome. So let's have a look at what happens when we pair these two. I shall just quickly fit the, fill in the squares and then I'll be back. So here we are then. I've now completed this and let's have a look at what the outcome is here. So along the top we've brought down the um, genes from the um, cinnamon cock and the normal hen. And along the top here we've got a um, cock bird that is normal split cinnamon. It contains one of the non-mutated genes, therefore it's going to be normal. It contains a, a split gene for cinnamon. And again here we've got a, um, a cock bird that is um, a normal split cinnamon. So 50% of the birds are going to be um, normal split cinnamon. Over here, however, we've now got the hen bird, and we'll notice here that the hen bird is um, going to be a um, cinnamon uh, hen and a cinnamon hen. So in this case, it's slightly different to previously, where actually all of the um, hens are going to be cinnamon, and all of the cocks are not are going to, are going to be um, a uh, normal split cinnamon. So from this pairing we can guarantee that any cinnamon bird produced is going to be um, a hen and that's what we mean by sex link. In fact we can now we can now posit positively say um, what the sex is just based on the colour of the bird or the, the variety of the bird, the fact that it's cinnamon and that's what we mean by sex link. So I hope that now makes sense to you. Um, what we'll do now is um, Go back and have another look quickly. Quick look at the um, chromosomes. So, what about our lace wing then? Um, and how does that fit into this? Well, actually, there's no um, direct lace wing gene. In fact, the lace wing um, bird is made up of two mutated genes, and I've got it showing here on the um, uh, uh, diagram of the um, X and Y chromosomes. It's actually the lace wing bird is actually made up of a a cinnamon um, mutation and the um, eno mutation, so the albino or lutino um, mutation, and those together produce the um, lace wing bird. But actually, this makes something um, quite interesting. So, because we know that this particular chromosome would have been inherited um, directly as one single chromosome from the um, cockbird, which means the actual cockbird must have been um, split for cinnamon and ino. So, um, but that split was actually on the same chromosome, not on two different chromosomes. So it, could, it would have passed on the cinnamon and ino gene complete, or it would not have passed on either the cinnamon or the ino gene, assuming that um, the other chromosome uh, didn't have either of the two mutations. So it, in terms of the outcomes, um, previously when we um, looked at outcomes for a um, blue split um, cinnamon um, I know we may well have split them down and there might have been a 50% chance of the offspring being uh, cinnamon and a 50% chance of the offspring um, being um, Eno. Um, uh, but in this case that's not possible. They would have had to have been nice when they can't be um, one or the other. Um, so that's um, interesting in itself and uh, does mean that the direct um, 
uh, Punnett square way of do it, dealing with this when the uh, mutations are on the same um, chromosome needs to be slightly different and there are other genes that follow the same pattern and we'll look at some of those um, in the next video so and how we would then use the Punnett square in order to produce to predict the outcome where there are two mutated genes on the same chromosome. Um, there's also something uh, quite interesting about um, the fact that we can have two mutated genes on the same chromosome. So let's assume that um, we have a bird um, that is split for cinnamon. So it just has a cinnamon gene on one of its chromosomes and it then has the um, eno gene um, mutation on the other chromosome. No matter how you pair those, you would never come up with the um, the uh, two uh, mutated genes on the same chromosome. So how do the um, two genes, so how do the cinnamon and the um, eno gene mutation appear on the same chromosome in the um, blue cockbird that I had? Now I suppose there is a possibility that we had a a bird that had either the cinnamon or the um, eno, eno mutation and then one of the um, non-mutated genes decided to mutate on that particular bird but um, given the fact that lace wings aren't are, are reasonably uh, common they're not very common but reasonably common um, mutation that's unlikely to have happened in every time so there must be a way for the mutated gene to jump from one chromosome to the other and again that's what we're going to look at in the next video in fact um, in the next video we'll look at um, how um, mutated genes can move from one chromosome to the other and also how to use the Punnett square when we've got two mutated genes on the same um, chromosome and I will be honest um, it is one of the part of the um, the um, genetics uh, that I had to read through lots and lots of times before I fully understand it um, and we'll have to read through lots and lots of time again in order to be able to explain it um, to yourself but hopefully um, uh, I will do that over the next um, month when I come to produce the next uh, video um, where I should be able to explain it reasonably um, simply if there is such a way anyway I'll hand you back now uh, or we'll go back now and have a, a final um, comments uh, with the birds. Well, I hope you found that um, interesting and now we can understand where I produced my um, uh, lacewing hen from the uh, sky blue um, cock and the um, light green uh, hen. We now know, that, of course, that the sky blue cock was in fact split for lacewing and um, when he passed that, that on um, and the hen passed on the Y chromosome that didn't have the recessive lacewing uh, gene, then a lacewing hen was produced. That's how I should have known that that bird um, was a, a lacewing. So, hope you enjoyed that. Once again, as always, if you did enjoy it, please leave a great big like. And um, if you want to see more videos in the Beginner's Guide to Budgerigars, uh, then please do subscribe. Thank you.